Okay, it's Friday. That means it's time for a movie retrospective. Mm. Kind of a wild card today. This one's a little bit, yeah. I want to say it's a little bit newer, but it came out in 2001, which actually it, it was a really was cool long time flick. ago. It's a cool <laughs> flick, though. I like this movie. It was, yeah, this was one, it, like, uh, it came up on Shudder. We're getting, we're giving that uh, Shudder subscription to work out, aren't we? Yeah, it's quite worth it, actually. Shudder's, Shudder's yeah, a good service. Be, I like it better than Netflix, actually. Like I said, they're not paying me. $5 yeah, a month. Yeah, I like it's it. like be- they have a shit ton of good movies on there. I like it better than Netflix. Yeah, so I saw this movie, which is the 2001 film Frailty. And I said, oh, I remember that being really good. Mm-hmm. Let's watch that one. Because yeah. I figured Tom would probably like it. I didn't uh, remember if you had seen it or not. Yeah, I saw it. You know, once I once I started watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this movie. Yeah. And then, yeah, and, like once yeah. you saw it, you started to remember. It's like, uh, it's weird because it's a very strange movie. Um, I don't know if I'd call it exactly a pure horror movie. It's kind of more like a thriller mystery type thing. Um, but it has like a lot of horror elements in it. There's not a lot of gore or anything, but... Yeah, yeah, and it ends up being basically kind of like a supernatural thriller. Yeah. Or a psychic thriller or something in the yeah. way. Yeah, like I said, it's yeah. a really weird movie. Now, this is actually... Yeah, I can make a lot of connections with this movie and other movies that would blow your mind, too. <laughs> I like this movie because it is not what it seems to be on the surface. Yeah, and it's really kind of like... It, it, it goes see, in a yeah. direction that... A lot of movies don't go in. Right. You know it seems I mean? to be kind of like sacrilegious and kind of like against like the Christian religion at first. And then all of a sudden you start thinking, wait a minute, is this a Christian fundamentalist movie? Yeah. And I think some people are left with that impression. But I had a different interpretation of it. Yeah. I, it can I, go a lot of different ways. It can go directions. in a bunch of different ways once once you you, you really look into it. and, and Which to, is why I thought it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's about psychic abilities. Yeah. You know. But yeah, uh, this was actually, interestingly enough, this was the first feature film that was directed by the famous actor, Bill Paxton, mm-hmm. who was obviously in Aliens. Yeah, he's he dead in, now. He, he yeah, died. he died early last year. He had a stroke yeah. um, when he was having a heart surgery. Yeah, actually. died young. Yeah, he was he was actually quite young. All right. But this was his first and actually I always forget about this. This was his first movie that he directed, but I totally forgot that he directed the video for Fish Heads by Barnes and Barnes never from like saw the it. early nineteen eighties. You never don't remember saw fucking Fish Heads? I no. thought everybody knew Fish Heads. No, never Yeah, heard. he directed that. He directed a lot of music videos and stuff like that. But this was actually his first movie, it came out in two thousand one. Actually had some big stuff. You know the song in Fish Heads? Yeah. And I always I keep forgetting. It's like that's cause that's just so right. random. But yeah, so this was his first movie. A lot of big stars in it, actually. Uh, Matthew McConaughey is in it. Uh, Powers Booth is in it. And it's kind of like... It, it kind of comes at you one way, and then it's got like a couple... And, and I'm going to say right now, we're going to have to spoil the twists, because there's more than one. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of two big twists in it. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to have to spoil them. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to talk yeah, about this yeah, movie. Is, is, is there a place where they can watch this? Like I said, it's, like on, it's on Shutter. I don't know. Shutter. I don't All know right. if you can watch it for free. If you so haven't like, seen this movie and you're like a regular, then turn this listener, off and go watch it. You probably want to see this. You probably want to because we are totally going to watch the movie first. Yeah. So go ahead and like shut it down because we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> spoil it. And really, I don't think the movie is as enjoyable. Um, once you know which direction it's going to go yeah, in. Yeah, it's it, kind of better if you don't know where it's all right. going. Well, you know what we can do? We can do the setup. It's about a a boy telling the story about his father who's getting these, hearing the voice of God. And God is telling him to go out and kill these people. And the reason why he's killing them is because God says that they're actually demons that have been trying to come through this other dimension. And the boy has a little brother. And the little brother, he's like, yeah, this is what dad says we have to do. And and he's like telling the little brother, man, dad's nuts. You know, you know they, yeah. they, they, these people aren't demons. You know, they're just innocent people and he's killing them. And, dad's and his dad's no laying killer. hands on them and he can see their sins and shit. And that's just the beginning of this movie. Yeah. So, so like, that's the setup. That's a good time to like, if you don't, that's all I can spoil of this flick. Yeah. After if this it, sounds like this should be a movie that you'd like to see. Go ahead and watch it now and turn it off. Yeah, because like uh, I said, we're going to... Right, I think that's a, that's a good setup, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's good enough. I mean, basically, like I said, it almost starts like 
a serial killer police procedural type of thing. Because at the beginning, you're seeing Matthew McConaughey, who is allegedly um, the grown-up brother of the so-called God's Hand serial killer, who the FBI has been looking for. So he pulls up outside Powers Booth's office, and Powers Booth is the, you know, the FBI agent's been working on the case, and he's basically like, oh, guess what? My brother is the God's Hand killer. I stole an ambulance, and his body is outside in the ambulance right now because I told him I'd bury him in this specific place and all this other stuff. So most of the story is told in flashback form. Right. Um, Matthew McConaughey. The guy's telling the feds about how is, he grew up and right, what his dad did. Allegedly the older yeah. brother, Fenton. And he's talking about how his younger brother, Adam, is the God's hand killer. And he's talked about how it started. And he said, you know, we had our mother died. And then dad, who is never given a name, he's just called dad uh, through the whole, who's actually played by Bill Paxton, who also directed the movie, um, that they had like a pretty normal life. And then all of a sudden, one day, dad says, oh, by the way. God came to me in a vision or a dream or whatever and said that we have to be demon slayers now and that we're going to know like where all the magical tools are and shit like that. Like God will tell us and he'll give us a list of like all these people that are demons and we have to go kill them. And like I said, apparently the older brother is like, nah, I'm not doing that. But then the little kid is just like, you mean we're like superheroes? And the dad's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, I'm on board. Yeah. And what's funny is like the the older brother is like, man, there's cameras in there. And he goes, don't worry. God will protect us. And it was like, man, we're going to kill this guy out in public. Don't worry. No one will see. God God said it's okay. You know? Yeah, we're just gonna and kidnap it's, and this it's just guy ridiculous. in a parking lot yeah, of yeah. like a of like a hardware store or yeah. something like in the middle of the day or some yeah. shit. No, don't worry about it. Don't like, worry about it. Protect. God, God says we, it. God said he's got it covered. They got away with it. Yeah. So the creepy thing. So you think that it's going that way, which I which again is like creepy enough because you think, okay, well the dad's lost his marbles. Obviously, the older kid is the only one that sees reason out of this whole thing, and it's really scary, and it's like this kind of child abuse kind of thing happening because yeah. it's like he's axing people to death in front of these two little kids and yeah saying, choking some of them it's all right it's not a person it's yeah, a demon yeah, don't and he's worry about putting it putting hands on him goes did you see that and i think the little boys the the, the, the little boys said, said yeah i can't i can't see he says you saw what he did and he goes yeah i saw it but the older ones little boy's like oh man you're it. tripping yeah that he doesn't see it so there's right. like this horrible conflict yeah. because i mean the kids they're not old like the older kid fenton i think he's supposed to be like 10 11, 11 12 something yeah. like that and then the younger brother adam is supposed to be like nine the yeah. one that's totally on board yeah so he's these are to- like he, little little kids yeah he claims to have seen it he also claims to have seen angels didn't he yeah and, well, and heard what god said on a couple times I think. yeah yeah but it's it well bill paxton's character dad he actually sees the angel at one point like yeah. he's, work, he's a mechanic and he's like working on a car and then all of a sudden he sees that's pretty much the only time you get to see like a kind of supernaturally looking vision like this big yeah. angel comes down and he looks all pissed off and then suddenly he's like oh that's that's the list i gotta start writing all these people's names down yeah and so he proceeds. he was getting lists out of the phone books too what he was going through the phone book um, well, he was going through the phone book to find out where they lived. Where they lived, okay. But the angel God gave didn't him the tell list. Him the addresses, I guess. The, but the angel gave him the, the names. The angel gave him the names. Okay. Yeah, because as soon as he came out from under okay. the car after seeing the angel, he pulled out his little pad and started right. writing all the names down. Yeah. Um, but then, so like I said, yeah, he was looking at the phone book. So I guess he was looking for the address because, like I said, he just mm. got the names, not the addresses. So you think that it's going along this particular route, that it's like, okay, here's these two little kids, their dad just suddenly flipped out and decided that God told him that he should kill all these people and all this other shit. But then, now, which I can't remember, it's like we just watched it a couple nights ago. What was that? Now, the twist that comes first, so like I said, this whole thing is being told pretty much in flash. It's like two long flashbacks and like in between. The first twist... He tells the little brother, the bo- the older brother told the little brother that he was going to go to the police or something and rat on dad. Which he did. Which he did. and But then dad said, uh, you know, he talked his way out of it with the police. And dad put the kid in the basement. Yeah, that's right. And told until him that, he had a revelation. And, and, until he'd have a revelation until God would show him. Yeah. But it never happened. He kept him down there for a long time, too. Yeah, they didn't say... I think it was like a week, maybe two yeah. weeks. Like, he didn't starve to death, but... Um, Close. You don't think he was even giving him water, was he? Well, the little brother was oh, bringing sneaking him water. water? Yeah. Okay. Well, he wasn't sneaking. The dad said he could take okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I like didn't really remember that part real clearly. Yeah, he was like... But uh, he never has the vision. And the dad said, I'm not going to believe what the angel told me. 
Remember that? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. He just kind of gave him a second chance, even though he never had the vision. Well, they were on a mission to kill this biker who'd evidently done something bad. He was touching him, you know, and the uh, you know they they captured him and brought him back to the little slaughterhouse that they would kill him, you know, where they would kill him, and. Uh, he was laying hands on him and seeing what he do, what he had done. He goes, "You didn't know anybody saw that, you know, did you? You know." And I, I, the the little brother, he was all in on it. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, I see it." That kind of deal. And the um, he, they, he gave the axe to the older son, the one who didn't have the vision, and he, he told him to to kill the guy. Yeah, he said like because the the, a, the older kid lied to get out of the yeah, basement. He said, right. "Yeah, God talked to me." That's right. And the dad is just like, "Okay, well, yeah, it. that's right. I forgot so about that." So kill the next demon. So the, the 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 older son was getting ready to cock back like that to cut the dude's head off, and instead he swung the axe around and hit his dad right in the chest with yeah, it and killed, killed his, dad, his dad right in front of the little brother. And that yeah. was the first twist. Yeah. The, then, here's what I found interesting about that whole segment of the plot. Yeah. Was that, here's the thing. God, apparently, allegedly, tells Dad, hey, here's a list of people who are for real demons. You need to yeah. go and chop them up with an axe and bury them in the garden and, you know, it'll be fine. I'll fix it so you don't get caught. But then, apparently, the angel tells him that Fenton, the older kid, is also a demon. Yeah, that he's also a demon, yeah. But the dad doesn't want to believe that. No. Even though, for real, he's like, oh, kill all these people? Gotcha. Yeah. Right. But then the angel says, oh. Well, I don't remember if it actually expressly said that he was a demon. I think it said um, that he, his, maybe his name wasn't written in the book or some, something like that. I thought it was something I thought like that, that it implied that Fenton was a demon. Okay. Well, and because he, I think the reason that dad didn't say that right. was because he didn't want to make the kid feel bad. Right. Because he was still kind of giving him a chance because it was his son. <laughs> well, make a long story short, the kid that's, the grown kid that is now telling the feds the story of what happened to his dad and everything, he's telling this federal agent this over near where he supposedly buried all these people. The Rose Garden. Right. And, uh... Turns out that the the, the little that that the, the grown son is not the older son. He's actually the younger son. The, the believer. The, the believer. Yeah. And, and he, he killed his he killed his brother. Yes. And had him buried down through there. And the reason why he's telling him that is because this that this grown younger little brother knows the evil that the federal agent did. He grabbed him like that, and you get to see that the federal agent murdered his mom. Yeah, because uh, it yeah. should be noted... Nobody up, else knew it. Up to this point, the yeah. audience has not been privy to, these to visions. the visions. Right. All you see when Dad touches the person or when Adam uh, mm. touches the person or whatever, all you see is them like going, oh, yeah. and like acting like they're shocked or like yeah. electrified and or something. Somehow so when you he, don't see anything until the end. And when he touches the federal agent, the federal agent somehow knows that he saw it. Yeah. And he came out and told us, he said, you killed your mom, blah, blah, blah. And he said, how did you know that? So he right. confirmed. He confirms to you, to the audience, that, the that this vision is correct. true. Right. So he kills that guy, and um, it's revealed later on that the little, the, the grown kid, you know, what his real job is is he's a sheriff. He's a local sheriff, and he's got a wife and a kid, and he's doing God's work, hunting Chopping hunt, people up with. Well, hunting eggs. down. Well, he's a cop <laughs> by day and by night. He's hunting these. A demon. Evil player. people that had escaped justice. So you're left wondering, well, damn, is this a Christian fundamentalist kind of an apocalyptic movie? What was that? But the more I thought about it, actually, it's a movie a lot like Unbreakable, in yeah. a way. This character is a lot like the character that um, Bruce Willis was. He could kind of detect... You see... A lot of times in a lot of movies, and you know, I've had a near-death experience. I've seen, uh, I've had uh, out-of-body experiences. I, I've had one poltergeist incident that Jenny wrote a book about. A lot of times, human psychic abilities are kind of perceived through a through a prism of religion. So, had this story been taking place somewhere in another country, maybe it would have been Islam. You know what I mean? Or been the, the story would have been told through a prism of maybe Buddhism, or if this story were taking place a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, maybe these would have been Jedi hunting, hunting down Sith, you know? So I don't really see it as 
a religious movie per se. I thought more of a psychic movie. But because these guys were Southerners, you know, it had a veneer of Southern Baptist. Yeah, kind of it was apocalyptic. Said in Texas. Texas, said. right, yeah. yeah and to me, I, you know, coming from Mississippi, I thought that shit was cool as fuck. I liked it. The interesting thing about this movie, and like I said, you could be forgiven for the big twist at the end, because not only, it should be noted, not only did Matthew McConaughey actually apparently see this FBI agent killing his mother, like with his psychic abilities, yeah. or God showed him or vision, God or whatever. Or God showed the same way, right, yeah. And apparently that was true, because the, you know, Wesley Doyle, who Powers Booth played, the FBI agent, he said, how did you know that? So obviously that's a true thing. And it should be noted afterward that um, they knew, like the FBI knew that Wesley Doyle was dead. They found his ID and it had blood all over it and everything. I don't think they ever found where he was buried or anything. But when um, when Matthew McConaughey was leaving the FBI thing, because they were like, oh, well, we got him on camera. He was in here for like hours and hours. And guess what? When they watched the tape back, the tape was all fucked up, like yeah, over yeah, his face yeah, and yeah, shit like what... that. And then when the FBI like goes back to the town and it turns out that Matthew McConaughey is actually the town sheriff. Yeah. And he walks out and you're like, oh my God, he's the sheriff. Yeah. And the FBI agent doesn't recognize him, even though he looked at him for hours and yep. hours. So like, he, they were he being him. protected. So they were being protected. They couldn't so, be photographed and they right. uh, their, 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 their identities were being clouded. People's memories are being clouded. Yeah. So, you know, you could interpret it as, hey, is God protecting them? Or yeah. is it the force protecting God them? God said to go act. Or is it death. mental domination? You know what I mean? Uh, because you know some people that have you know claimed to have exhibit some psychic abilities, they seem to kind of they're able to do them when when they kind of have uh, I guess you could say a selfless quality to them, where they can say, oh, "It's not me doing it; it's God doing it. It's not me doing it; it's the demon doing it, or it's the poltergeist doing it." You know what I mean? And that so in this particular case, the explanation is that it's God. You know? Right. If, the, if these weren't Southern Baptists, maybe, say if they were some kind of a New Age cult that was doing this, they would say, well, it was the universe. You know? The universe is doing it. Or the force is working through us. It was like that. When we were talking about it earlier... I thought earlier, it was a cool flick. When we were talking about it earlier, I thought to myself, you know... This could be, even if there was no, I mean, obviously there's a supernatural element uh, to it, which you find out at the end. Because like I said, the first three quarters of the movie, you just think this guy's a nut job and, you know, he's just hacking up these innocent people. But then you find out that these people were actually bad people or had done yeah. bad things in the past. Like they had murdered people. Murdered or were, children. Or they were child molesters yeah. or whatever. I think they were murdering those children, so, not just Muslims. Yeah, so it's almost kind of like, I almost felt like it was... Uh, they were kind of going for maybe uh, it was like Dexter. Yeah. But super like if Dexter didn't have to do all the research, like if he just knew because he well, had psychic power. You could also say like a superhero or yeah, a Jedi. That too. I mean, you know, the Jedi cut Sith in half and during yeah. the lightsaber fights and shit like that. Like I know? said, it's a very strange uh, movie because yeah. it could be because it has that veneer, like you said, of it had fundamentalist a Christian, yeah, Christianity. Fun, yeah, and in a way, that veneer kind of exposes your own prejudiced against Christianity. That Oh, they're just wackos. And you tell, no, he's actually doing this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, this shit's really happening. You know what I mean? So that kind of adds to the weirdness of this movie. Well, that's what's so weird about it. It's like when you think about, like I said, when you watch it, like, and I'm not saying anything, like I really like this movie. I thought it was really well directed, really well acted. It's it's actually quite creepy. Yeah, And it's quite creepy. disturbing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's disturbing yeah. is because one, it has the courage of its convictions. Yeah. It sets up a thing where it's like, here's a guy who was a serial, he's axing people to death and yeah. supposedly these are innocent people, but then you find out that no, that no they're not innocent people and let, he was right. Like he was, he yeah. was having visions yeah. that these were bad people and he was killing them and then he was being protected by God or whatever force right. it was. So it actually did have the courage to go yeah. there. And what's funny is that other, other, um, other tales kind of can do the same thing and then you accept them like oh okay no problem like what if what if this was like the shadow you know the, you know, the superhero right. the shadow doing things kind of like that yeah. sensing evil uh, being able to know what the evil that men do and going after them you know now he didn't chop their heads off in a basement he ended up shooting them or arresting them if he had to depend right. you know but it's that same situation what if 
The story would probably be easier for an American audience or more palatable or easier to accept if these were so, portrayed as some kind of weird, you know, Eastern wushu, you know, Buddhist monks that are doing this through some kind of meditation. You know what I mean? And then people right. are like, oh, yeah, it's like Kung Fu powers. You know, but if you say, no, these are Southern Baptists doing it. You know, that's one step away from them, you know snake handlers and you know drinking poison you know what, what mean, if they were doing that you that know? was kind of an interesting thing because yeah. like i said i brought up dexter before like dexter he's an anti-hero i guess but you do kind of root for him he is a very yeah. sympathetic character yeah. um yes he's a serial killer but he kills other serial other killers, serial killers right. so you're kind of down with that yeah but because it doesn't have any trappings of religion on top of it, yeah, it's easier. I feel to... like it was, yeah, it was like easier to swallow because right. he was just a regular guy who happened to be a serial killer. Yeah. And he was just going after modern bad people. secular Americans are so used, to, especially of our generation, are so used to being lied to by t televangelists and these bullshit Christian cults that are around here. You know what I mean? We just kind of expect them just to be hacks and to be fakes, you right. know, and nuts. You know, and he kind of and, used that, yeah. You and, know, to the, you know, to kind of subvert. It's yeah. kind of a subversive movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. It takes what way. you. It, it takes the shit that takes shit you you don't believe in and go. <laughs> it, it 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 does play on your prejudices. It does. Yeah, it, it does. Did, that's it what does. makes it so interesting. Yeah. And I think, and I mean, honestly. Um, I don't really think that had it, it really didn't do much uh, business when it came out. It was generally pretty positively reviewed uh, when it first came out, particularly Roger Ebert actually really liked it and he gave it like a really glowing review. Um, in the years since, it seems like it's a little bit underappreciated, but it does feel like it's, um, I mean, it's come up on like a really lot of like best horror movies of that decade yeah. uh, list that I've seen. Like it's kind of an underrated gem type of thing. And like I said, it's almost like, I've never seen another movie like that. I think the only one that I can think of that's kind of similar was actually not a horror movie, but it was that one, The Rapture, that had Mimi Rogers in it. Yeah, I think that's the one I was thinking of. I was thinking that's was, kind of similar. Was, there was because I was thinking there was one that came out a few years before this one. Yeah, that reminded me of that one too, and it was it's, like an apocalyptic yeah, tale. Yeah, it's probably and that. You think it's all bullshit, but it turns out the apocalypse was happening. That it was real. Yeah, but she, like I said, it's it's kind of a similar theme yeah. to it. Um, it kind of gives me that same kind of vibe. And um, also, I think the only criticism a lot of people had was that they didn't really like the switcheroo. It seemed like it, um, not so much, you know, oh, demons are real, but the switcheroo between Adam and Fenton. Yeah. Um, cause they thought, oh, well, it seems a little too usual suspects type of thing. Which, it almost okay, I seems can, like, I can buy that, but this movie sometimes felt kind of like what M. Night Shamarama Ding Dong. That's what I just said. Yeah. Oh, did, just, uh, you know, yeah. like that, in yeah. fact, well, not, you know, but I not was just going to say it's kind of like has a similar, Shamarama but you know, better, kind of twist. better. I Be actually better. like this better than most oh, even though I like, I liked Unbreakable yeah. and, and I liked, um, the one that the kids could see ghosts. What was the name of that one? Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. That yeah. was actually a good movie, yeah. It was a pretty good movie. Now, yeah. I've heard that some of his, because he had a run of kind of questionable ones there for yeah. a while. Like, The Village was all right. Um, yeah. I didn't see Lady in the Water because I just heard it was atrocious, so I didn't bother. Um, but I heard that his newer one, Split, was actually pretty good, and so I actually have to see that. And we should see that because yeah, that new, new one, Glass, that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm that's kind of like an unbreakable... Sequel, the sequel to, yeah. But it has the guy from Split that was in it, like the Split person. I thought guy. Unbreakable was a missed opportunity. That should have come out, a series like that should have come out before the, you know, before all these Marvel series yeah. made it big. You know what I mean? Like, he should have he kept going with that. I think that would have worked. He should have, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, like I said, I feel like M. Night, you know, we're kind of getting off the top. Yeah, we're off the top. That's okay. But I'm just saying, I kind of feel like M. Night, like, he had one really good idea, like Sixth Sense. That was, like, a good movie. And then it seemed like, oh, well, that's my shtick. I have to do, it's like, a big keep, twist keep ending. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And then that. when they keep right. doing that, they just get more and more ludicrous, right. and you just can't really yeah. buy it. The twist in this one, I mean, uh, and I'm not talking about, like I said, the demons are real twist, because that's pretty crazy but i'm just the the twist between like the two characters being switched um it wasn't really all that ludicrous um you know the guy just came in and he's like i'm my brother and yeah but really it was just you know opposite identity so you know i didn't think it was that egregious so it didn't bother me all that much no but, it was it was plausible but like i said yeah the it, it's just interesting because this movie is just like it's really um thought provoking like yeah. it will bring up a lot of 
And and I think it's interesting how you said that. Yeah, it kind of brings up brings out people's prejudices maybe against yeah. that type of thing because yeah. you're so used to oh some here's some crazy fundamentalist yeah, like right, yeah. hacking people up and told them God told, God them, told to, them to do except it except right. this time he did yeah evidently or he it, or he perceived yeah it. And, then, and then like it, it, it the movie kind of ends where they show the kill the killer okay yeah come in on surveillance tape. And wherever his face is, there's a damn line yeah. of static. You can't see. And they were like, well, what are we going to do with this? So you, it turns out, yeah, they, they were protected. But it just leaves it open. Were they protected by God? Were they protected by some kind of an internal psychic force or something or, or that, that he was emitting? Were they protected by some kind of a universal force that he was channeling like a Jedi? You don't know. Were, were they protected by a demon that was were pretending they protected, to be God? Yeah, you don't know. I don't think it was a demon. Well, it could have been, because though, they left it ambiguous. Because when he grabbed the federal agent, you actually saw the vision, and the federal agent said, how did you know about that? So he confirmed that it was a true vision. Yeah. They were evildoers that they were killing. Yeah. So, you know, if it was, I would think if it was a demon, they'd be, you know, they'd be killing good they'd people. They'd be like, hey, they killed your killing, mom, high yeah, five. Yeah, <laughs> So. Doing the demon's work. Some kind of a universal force was working through them they they uh kind of saw it as god in a southern baptist way you know was making them go out and destroy these evil people because yeah. god wanted it and they, you know the kid was like why are we doing this? he's just don't, you can't question it there's yeah. a plan god says we have to do it yeah and don't worry about anything we can't get caught yeah. He's protecting us. So that's what I mean. It was yeah. like, it, it's kind of... So who are you really, to question like, some shit like that? They can't yeah. even get you on video. I'd be like, okay, all right. I guess this is how it rolls. Like I said, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty disturbing movie, and it's like kind of, it's pretty thought-provoking. And like I said, yeah. I haven't really seen another one like this. Um, and like I said, it's interesting how, I mean, this was Bill Paxton's big debut, yeah. and... Uh, it has the, like I said, it has the courage of its conviction. It's, yeah, they're it's like, like, you don't like this? Fuck you. It takes the story <laughs> and it takes it to its logical conclusion. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, and if you don't like it, that's it's too bad. It's just like, it's one of those stories like, well, what if? Yeah. What if that shit was true? Yeah, you know? that's exactly what it was. It's, it's yeah. exactly, yeah, it's a what if exercise. What if? Like, what if every serial killer that said, oh, God told me to kill these people. What if that was actually happening? What if that was happen actually happening although, and they although had a reason there, for it? There, there would have been a difference. You know why? Because these guys couldn't be caught on film. There, yeah. No evidence was being left behind. Yeah. You couldn't even look at them and recognize them if you were an investigator. Yeah. So other serial killers didn't have that advantage, which meant that they were not protected by this force or this god. I kind of wonder, though, so. like, so this is just one dinky little town in Texas where this one guy doing this, he's got a big list of demons, man. There's a lot well, there of must demons be, There must town. be more of them. That's what I was just going to say. So that yeah. implies yeah. that God's picking like one person Guys in, in each little town and he's like, hey, and here's, here's another, a list of people to And here's another off. thing. It was his dad, not his older brother, but then the younger brother. Yeah. But that goes along with the Luke Skywalker thing of, well, it runs in my family. Yeah. And that's some weird shit. I kind of like your idea about how they have the like, psychic powers. Like it doesn't even yeah. have to have anything to do with. God I think it's like, or, like or it's that. like the force. Yeah, they just interpret it that they way. Interpret the way they interpret it as they're interpret interpreting it through their own cultural filter. That's yeah. what I thought when I saw it. That's actually, they, yeah, that's like kind of a cool reading. Because that would be the logical way. Like if this is going on around the earth, yeah. right? It's not going to be Baptists in. In in, in 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 Thailand, yeah, of course, it's gonna be Buddhists in Thailand right. doing it, you know. Yeah, and maybe in another place, you know, in China, you know, where there's it's all atheists. They got guys doing it, but it's not religion. It's atheists that are doing it, right? And they're doing it. They're thinking that they, they may have a different interpretation of of this. Yeah, it might be, you know, well, I'm being driven this through some kind of a quantum force that's working through me, and it's something extra dimensional. You know, they might have yeah. a totally different interpretation of what's happening to them you know but yeah it's an interesting movie for yeah. sure and like i said you know i know if you haven't seen it well sorry we just spoiled the whole fucking movie but yeah. we did warn you yeah we warned you we gave, we gave fair, fair warning <laughs> but yeah it's on it might be on some other services i'm sure it probably is but it's on shutter uh at the moment and it's really yeah. kind of an underrated if you're not and paying, forgotten if you, if, sort of movie if you're not paying that five bucks a month for that shutter service you're kind of missing out Five bucks a fucking month, and they're not paying us. 
They're not paying. Well, I just like I said, uh, it, five dollars would be too much if they didn't have anything worth watching. Everything they, that's on there is pretty cool. But they have a lot of shit yeah. on there with what, well, like they have. A, there's a shit ton of classics and stuff like that. And mm. I was like, like I said, I was scrolling through and yeah. I came across this one. I said, they oh, got an I Xbox this movie. apps. I'm, I'm, we watch it through my Xbox. There's an Xbox app for. And sometimes it. I watch it on my laptop. Right. Too. Yeah. So. So you can just, kind of watch it anywhere. Yeah. But yeah. So it's on Shutter and check it out. Frailty from 2001. And like I said, it's uh, Bill Paxton's directorial debut at least for a feature film because he passed away early last year so you should probably check it out and that will do it for our latest movie retrospective remember if you like the show like share subscribe it really helps us out a lot if you'd like to financially support the show you can go to our patreon page at patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast or you can go to our blog which is 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com and there's a link in the sidebar to a paypal account if you'd like to give a one-time donation um also remember that our movie reviews come out every friday our regular episodes come out every tuesday and our 13 o'clock matinee show, which is the three new movies that we watched in the theater every week, come out every Sunday. So check those out as well. We will see you next time. Bye.